Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Nationals March to October. And today should be a fun one because, well, first of all, we have the Washington National debut of Blake Snell. If you missed it at the end of the last episode, we had a trade pop up right before the deadline and I pulled the trigger on it and we got Blake Snell. The only big leaguer I had to trade away for him was Victor Robles. And because of that, because things got shuffled around, it messed with the entire lineups and messed with the pitching rotation. So before we start today, I want to show you guys what's going on there. And also the other reason why this should be a fun episode is we should pretty much right away after the Snell debut, be able to see all the potential ratings of the draft picks from this draft that just happened. But yeah, let's take a look at the pitching rotation now because they reordered the rotation based solely on the ratings. So we have Snell at an 84, and then Adone Cavalli Strasburg's down to a 78, which is actually kind of interesting because I don't know if I ever specifically pointed it out, but he actually improved back up to an 80 overall at one point. But then with the addition of Snell, it kicked Mackenzie Gore out of the rotation, and I think I will leave it like that because then that gives us another lefty in the bullpen. And we'll have to see because it'll all depend on what the CPU does with Strasburg as he continues to decline because by the postseason it might automatically put gore in that starting rotation over strasburg and there might really not be anything i can do about it because they're always automatically updating the postseason rotation you don't really have much say in the matter and the game automatically decided to send down kyle finnegan which kind of stinks because he was actually one of our best relief pitchers as the setup man i mean in only 14 and two-thirds innings he only had given up one run on a solo homer four hits allowed and two walks allowed i mean that is just complete dominance so it really sucks that he was who the game decided to send down lineup wise though it literally it did it changed everything it put i mean i guess i don't really have to go through it but like it put rosario at dh and had him leading off so i had to completely readjust this lineup back to where it was and i did put it back to where it was at least i think so the guy who got called up to replace Victor Robles' spot is Jason Vossler, which is actually fine because he can play first. So that kind of opens up a few more possibilities with having just one more guy who can actually play first base. And then I really had to make a decision here who I wanted to play in center field over Robles. And I went with Rosario. We could have had Kiermaier and had that real good fielding, but Kiermaier has been pretty bad lately too. And when I was looking at the splits, Rosario actually is hitting better against righties than Kiermaier is. And I think Rosario should be fine in center also with a lot of speed good reaction i know his fielding won't be that good because he'll take a secondary position hit but hopefully he can finally get that bat going because he should have a pretty good presence in the lineup with those numbers and then against lefties i think i kept it the same the only thing is now kiermeyer's in over abrams and i think that's it i think that's all we have to cover so we can go ahead and get into this player lock moment with blake snell our newest actor acquisition and i know it's against a tough team with the astros but normally i feel like i can rely on myself to have a good pitching player locked game and get a solid boost and here we go we got a face off against jeremy Pena right away snell's got that four pitch mix which you know you'd always like a fifth but four pitches is fine he does have a pretty big par on some of these pitches and i know he was walking a lot of dudes and are we really giving up a leadoff base hit come on but the really good thing about that snell trade too if you missed it was he is signed to a contract where this is not at all a rental for just this season he is signed for three more seasons after this one so i really do think in terms of the value we gave up and got back we probably won the trade and that should be a pop fly we can't seem to strike these guys out though on 02 counts all right this is not off to a good start we're walking your don two base runners allowed here in the first and another two strike count where we can't get a strikeout, but everyone's going to stay where they're at. And there we go, a strikeout on a curve in the dirt. No harm done that inning, but a lot more pitches than I wanted to throw. 
There we go, another punch out. Hopefully that means we're settling in here. Alright, that's hit right to us at first. We're all good. There we go. Too patient there. Kept that one in the zone and he's just looking. Alright, we're dealing with the bottom half of the order. But now it's gonna flip back up to the top. We just gotta handle this part too. And we're not going to. Jeremy Pena gets another hit. I'm really going to be curious how far they stretch Snell for this game. Because we are already at 44 pitches. Stealing? You got to be kidding me. That's going to score them a run, isn't it? Okay, no, they didn't go. But really, on a steal, they're going to get one of those kind of hits. And was that Manessis and right? Oh, right. Okay, I was going to say, why is he playing right? But it's because, for this game, the lineups are still messed up with how they had it. It didn't... I don't think that makes a difference. I don't think we'd get him at home, but it didn't let me run to cover home right away. There we go. Finally sat him down. This is getting frustrating here because these Astros are just patient and fouling pitches off and hitting perfect, perfect lefty, lefty shots. Well, that's not good. This, uh, this does not make me feel good about getting a boost with Snell in this game. Did a Bray you? No, okay. I thought for a second he got a lot of that one also, but we're good. Only three runs allowed through three. I don't know. This doesn't worry me too much about Snell, just because this is easily the best that the CPU has hit off of me, regardless who's pitching. Maybe in this whole March to October. All right, another punch out, though. Once we get to a Bray you or past a Bray you, we can start getting these guys out easier. If that's another bloop hit, okay, no. He actually got there. We do have seven strikeouts already. So maybe a few more. Don't give up any more runs. And we should still be able to get some kind of a boost. It'd be nice if the offense woke up and, and did something so that maybe we could still win the game. There we go. There's another one. All of these punch outs are coming in the bottom half of the order. Six through nine. Oh, and there we go. We finally got Pena out. That's a nice little weak line drive. Okay, so we're through five. This is looking a little better now. Nine strikeouts through five, three runs allowed. If we can get through this sixth, that would technically be a quality start, right? I mean, I guess we'd have to not give up any more runs if they continue to leave me in. Oh my, oh wait, no, we're there, all right. That works, the shift actually kinda helped right there, didn't it? I want that 10th punch out though. I thought that'd be a good strikeout pitch, but it stayed in the zone. All right, another two strike count that we didn't get our 10th strikeout in, but it's an out, and we're still actually in the green energy, so I would not be shocked if they uh, throw me out there for the seventh. Weak grounder. Rosario actually made the play, and there it is. If, we, if we're if we done now, that's a quality start with 9Ks. And we're not done. Couldn't take the lead, but we're coming back out for the 7th. That's fine. I'm not upset about this one, because we're still in the green, and we're at the part of the order that I've been dominating. As long as they take me out before it gets back up to the top part of the order, then I'm fine. Oh, and you know, I didn't even realize until right now, they don't even have Altuve playing. So this could and should be an even tougher lineup. That play's not going to get made. I mean, he made... Oh, he did. I did not think he was going to get it there in time. All right. I still want that 10th K, though. I feel like double-digit strikeouts actually, like, holds a lot of value when it comes to the boost. Uh... Yeah, it left. Okay. Man, I was not expecting him to actually turn on it. And they're going to take me out there. So we don't get the 10th strikeout. We give up the fourth run, so it's not a quality start. We were really on our way to salvaging at least a two and maybe even a three plus boost. But now I feel like it's going to be a one maximum. And this is not the spot to bring in a long reliever game. Come on. Did we win the game, though? We did not. 5-3. to three. So we pick up the loss in Blake Snell's debut on the team. Oh, 
Superior outing by starting pitcher. I feel like that's a lie though. Sometimes it lies about the pluses. I feel like that's only going to be a two, but still a two plus is better than I kind of expected from a game like that. And yeah, I was right, but two pluses for a boost. I mean, that could have an effect, and that negative momentum, just one, knocked us down that far, really? And now we lose the series to the Astros, and this is what I was waiting for. Now we get to see this. And just taking a glance at everything, maybe a little underwhelming. Ben Ramos, our number one overall pick, does seem like he's going to be pretty good, at least by the numbers. Still only has that three pitch mix with absolutely no velo, but he's a 67 overall with pretty good hits and Ks per nine, and he has that 91 potential. So he should get to a pretty high overall. He could actually, I mean, I know for like a high 80s, maybe if he gets up to the 90 overall player, it's kind of underwhelming to say he should be a long reliever, but with pretty solid stamina for a relief pitcher and only three pitches maybe that's gonna be his spot jose ayala's looking pretty good too with an 83 potential he's gonna be starting at a 69 so like he's already better than hunter harvey if he stepped in right now also has really nice stamina and then hits and k's per nine are both way up there everything else is 52 or below but then the velo i mean i guess it's not anything too impressive but after looking at ben ramos seeing 93 is like oh he's a flamethrower and then we move Move to Leo Blanco, who had a pretty big window of potential. He could have ended up being, but he ended up pretty much right in the middle at 75. But look at what he's at right now. 70 overall as an 18 year old. This dude can probably make it right now if we put him in our bullpen i mean we can't we'd have to wait until next season but if he does and he's in our bullpen next season at 18 years old with 85 k's per nine a good walks per nine hits per nine and clutch definitely could use some work but a five pitch mix this dude could be a consistently solid reliever for us for a long time you got to remember relief pitchers a mid 70s overall is perfectly fine i mean that's mostly what we have right now Wow, Joe Mantiply dominates and he's like a 77. Here we come up though to our first miss, at least I would say, on Hell Polito, only with a 63 potential and he's already a 60 so he's not even really going to get any better he does have good speed but i doubt anything else is going to be good enough for us to ever even think about having him come up to the bigs and then this was the one i was curious about alonzo acevedo he hit i guess slightly above the the halfway point of that window of scouting 77 potential but actually look at him whoa he's starting at a 74 so he's not going to get a ton better but a 74 overall as an 18 year old i mean look look at him look at this this could play right now i would like to see him not on our big league squad right away if he gets a fast track i mean come on could you imagine if he gets a fast track and then a call up we could get alonzo acevedo instantly up 10 overall he could become a mid 80s overall the potential might bump up to high 80s maybe even up to a 90 ish this uh this has the potential of being something really good and then our last pick of the draft draft was Kenny Galarraga, one more relief pitcher, only has a potential of 73 and he's starting out all the way down at a 54. So not the best pick there, but it was our last pick. It was the last pick of the draft actually. So he's only 18. He's got time to hit that potential. And if he does, you know, he could be a decent bullpen arm but now here's where it's gonna get probably both interesting and upsetting because now we get to look at the rest of the league so first of all let's just look at the rest of the division and see if anybody in our division made any big picks the phillies got okay they got three guys with a 80 potential this guy is starting at a 48 though so it's really these two guys two starting pitchers that that's a couple of solid picks right there and then we got the mets only making three picks in their last pick was probably their best one or maybe not because he's already 23 and he's only a 58 the marlins this guy could be decent 18 years old already a 69 with an 89 potential that's actually real solid only three pitches though as a starter and one of them's a running fastball you don't see that much and then the braves it doesn't really well 
Gustavo here at the bottom, really high potential, and he's only 18, but it's going to take a long time for him to get there at only a 53 overall. But yeah, nobody besides, I'd say, Estevan Cruz here was that great of a pick by the rest of our division. I guess these two are solid also, but not quite as good as this dude. And man, I should have, before I go through the rest of the league, I should have wrote down some names and where they went for guys that I was looking at, because I don't know if I'm going to be able to just remember everybody. I just want to see if there's any, like, Garrett Doyle type picks like last year, who was, uh, you know, 18 years old, started at a 79 and had 99 potential. Oh, actually, I didn't even realize we were on the Reds, but this was a dude that I had thought about taking at number one overall. Also pretty solid, but probably not as good as Ben Ramos. Cedric Jeffries, I remember, was somebody on my radar, and he did end up being pretty much what I expected. High speed guy, but nothing else really going for him. This Mario Gonzalez was somebody on my radar, and I don't know. I don't know if you could call this a good one or not, because he is only a 56 at 21 years old already, but he has good contact and a high potential. So I feel like that does give him a chance to become something decent. Marty Jarvis, also somebody on my radar, I remember, but he got taken before I even got to make a pick, and he looks decent. Not a great potential, though, only a 77, but he's starting at a 67, only 18. And then, ooh, I also remember this Geraldo Diaz. This is actually a really interesting card, okay, or player. I'm in Diamond Dynasty mode calling him a card. But I remember when I was at the point of the draft, just kind of looking for people that I didn't have scouted, but looked like they might have good numbers. This was the first dude that showed up on my radar and I wanted to take him, but he got picked before I could. But look at him, a 60 potential, but he's a 75 right now as an 18 year old. So he is just gonna absolutely nosedive the second that he starts getting in games. But maybe for the first first year or so he'll be pretty solid this is just going to be one of the weirdest careers because he's going to come out of the gates hot probably have a really nice rookie season and then you're never going to hear from him again there hasn't been really any amazing looking picks so far so this leo macias guy could have the chance of being the best one i've seen yet just because he's a catcher and he's only 18 with a 65 overall now and a solid potential and i guess you gotta throw this guy in there too then also but 18 year old catcher with 89 potential 67 overall right now so those might be the better picks in this draft just because there's really there's no garrett doyle pick or there's no uh what was it charlton francis who was the guy I wanted last year but got picked number one when I was number two. There's no picks like that. There's a lot of solid pitchers that are 18, 19 years old with low 90s, high 80s potential, but there's nobody that just like blows you away and yeah that's it we've gone through them all honestly ben ramos at a 91 potential is one of the higher potential ratings i saw so i think especially compared to the rest of the pool we did have a pretty good draft all right so that, that was good that that was solid that makes me feel better about my draft because i wasn't sure afterwards if it was a good draft and okay this is interesting a call up chance for Alex call. I don't know, maybe it would be smart. Maybe we don't need Jason Vossler, but I just, I don't see the need to shake things up like that. So we'll, we'll decline this and then we'll just play a normal game here against the Brewers to get some momentum back. Oh, and yeah, we are. We're a game and a half back now. We did move up to 10th ranked though. And okay, you know what? Just because we were just looking at all the draft picks and everything, now I just want to see how those two standout picks were last year. At least the two guys that I can remember charlton francis the 19 year old first baseman he's up to a 76 if i remember right he was a 74 to start and he's having a really nice season that hurts but you know who we could have taken was garrett doyle and we missed that one too he's up to an 81 as an 18 year old the average and on base not too good so i guess that's why the contact's going down but 19 bombs with 20 doubles oh but he does have a negative 1.4 wins above replacement. Okay, that's interesting. I would not have thought that based on these numbers. But he's 18. He's... 
I mean, he's going to be amazing. Okay, well, let's get into this game against Milwaukee. Get some momentum back. We'll probably call it an episode after this one. So let's finish this one on a good note. We have Nick Sandlin freshly brought in. So we got to use him. Protecting a 3-2 to two lead. And let's see what's got us here. We have three doubles, a triple, and a K-Bear Ruiz bomb. Cade Cavalli only gave up two hits, one earned run. Walked four and struck out nine. So a real nice start from him. Now we got to get him that win. Got to preserve it. A lot of speed over there at first, so we cannot give up a gapper. And there we go. We got the punch out on the slider. Let's give us an extra run here to work with in the bottom half of the inning. Ah, I just missed that. That's the pitch you got to go the other way with. That was real close to being a good swing, actually. Oh, and then I'm taking strike three with Rosario. That's not what he needs. We need to get a hit every time I step up with Rosario and pump those numbers up. And half. That's just going to be a lazy pop fly. So no extra insurance. We're going to have to win this one as is. Got to go to the closer, Efros. Get him another save here. Why does he have such little confidence here? I hope that that's not going to be bad. I don't really know what confidence actually affects. Maybe it just has an effect on 0.04 seconds being early instead of good enough to be a perfect release. Come on, man. That's too many foul balls already. There we go. Take a seat. Abrams is gonna get there all right wait he doesn't normally have a, a bronze badge at short does he so he must have gotten a, a boost an upgrade and he'll get another pot fly to show off that bronze badge and there we go nice easy little win there I wish I would have actually done something at the plate but we'll take our win it's not gonna give us a whole lot of momentum back but a loss would have given us a lot of negative so I guess we got to think about it that way hopefully we can play well in this sim without too much momentum or hopefully we have a quick turnaround for our next game because we gotta like make a push here to win this division we don't have a whole lot of time left okay i think we we alternated but i think we ended up winning three and losing two and we gained a half game i guess that was fine but that is where i'm gonna go ahead and call this one guys so make sure as always if you enjoyed today's episode leave a like for me and if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel go ahead hit that subscribe button but thanks for watching today guys thanks for stopping by again and i will see you next time